Hello, fifth grade. Today we will be reading chapters 17 through 19 of Where the, Meets the, Where the Mountain Meets the Moon, and we are getting started on page 97. Chapter 17. Minley gulped as she walked toward the gray stone wall of the city. As she passed the two stone lions marking the entrance, she glanced behind her. Even though she only saw the trees and shadows, she knew the dragon was hiding was hidden there. Quickly, she pushed through the doors of the gate, leaving the forest and the dragon behind her. As the gate closed, Millie stared. The trees were crowded and bustling. The city seemed to be bubbling with people like boiling rice. Vendors selling fruit and shoes called out their wares while people rushed past, some pushing wheelbarrows or balancing baskets on their shoulders. A large, muddy water buffalo led by a boy, perhaps a year or two older than Minley, wandered through and was ignored by a, it was ignored as a commonplace occurrence. Watch out, little mouse, a gruff man said behind her, his baskets of cabbages driving her into the crowd. As she was shoved and pushed, Minley grabbed the arm of the boy with the water buffalo. Hi, she said. If I want to see the king, where do I go? The king? The boy looked at her in surprise. You'd have to go to the palace. How do I get to the palace? Minley asked. Just follow the black stones, the boy said, pointing at the road paved with polished bricks. They'll lead you to the city. Wait, Minley said. Isn't this the city? The palace is in another city? You must not be from around here, the boy laughed. The city of bright moonlight is divided into two. This is the outer city, where anyone can live and travel. The inner city is where the palace is, where the king and officials live. You have to have permission to go into the inner city. If you don't, you're not going to be able to see the king or the palace. There are thousands of guards protecting the inner city. They won't let anyone through without permission. I'll find a way, Minley said confidently. Thanks. And she let go of the boy's arm and headed toward the black road. However, as Minley got closer to the inner city, she realized the boy was right. The red walls of the inner city loomed tall and forbidding, and every gold-studded gate was guarded by at least two soldiers, their silver armor reflecting in the hot sun. It would be a daunting task just to enter the inner city, much less find the palace and the king. But I must, Minley said to herself. Regardless, the guards' faces were stern and hard, and she quaked inside. If I ask to go in, Millie thought as she hung back amongst the fruit stands and fish vendors, they'll ignore me or force me away with their swords, and either way, I won't be able to see the king. What should I do? Not as easy as you thought, huh? A voice next to her, said next to her. Minley turned and saw the buffalo boy standing next to her. Minley gave him a wry look. Boys, she thought to herself, always thinking they know everything. Still, she had to admit he was right. She had no idea how she would see the king. They must let people into the inner city sometimes, Millie said. They do, the boy said. Once a year at the moon festival, they open the gates to everyone. When's the moon festival, Millie asked. Already happened, the boy said. You'll have to wait until next year. Millie bit her lip in frustration. What was she going to do? I don't know why you want to go in there so badly, the boy said. The buildings and clothes are nicer, but the people, a bunch of puffed up frogs, at the moon festival, one of the stablemen wanted to order me around and thought he could trick me into thinking he was the king. But when I asked why he wasn't wearing a golden dragon, he knew his prank wasn't going to work. Did he think I was stupid? Everyone knows a golden dragon is always and only worn by kings and the emperor. The people in there think we're a bunch of dumb oxen. The buffalo beside the boy gave a snort at that. Sorry, the boy said, pat patting the buffalo on the nose. You know I didn't mean that. But by this time, the inner city guards had seen them lingering by the gate. You there, kids, one of them barked. Move along. Come on, the boy said, tugging Minley's sleeve. Let's go. Minley followed him and the buffalo. Where are you going, she asked him. I'm going home, he said. You can come too if you want. And since Minley had no place else to go, she did. Chapter 18 Minley followed the boy through the maze of streets and alleyways for what seemed like a long time. If it wasn't for the big buffalo that was always in view, Minley would have easily lost him many times. Not too far now, the boy said to her. Minley realized that the boy lived very far from the inner city. The road was no longer stone but dirt. Even from a distance, she could see that the outer city wall was cracked and broken. I live over here, the boy said, pointing. And Millie looked down a muddy path that led to a shabby, rickety hut that looked as if the first strong wind would blow it away. The boy brought the buffalo right into the hut, and Minley went in after. She looked around the small, meager home. 
The only furnishings Minley could see were two wooden crates and a rough stool. On one side of the hut, a crude metal grate stood in the fireplace with a well-worn pot on it. The other half of the hut was divided into two piles of dry grass. Minley watched as the buffalo went directly to one pile and laid down. The boy gave it an affectionate slap on the side and dragged the rough wooden stool across the floor to her. Here, have a seat, he said, as he sprawled on the other pile of grass, and tell me why you want to go to the palace so much. It's not the palace, Millie said as she sat on the stool. I want to see the king. And she told the buffalo boy the whole story. She saw his face wrinkle with disbelief when she talked about the fish, and he shook his head when she t told about the dragon, but he didn't interrupt once. I don't know how you're going to see the king, the boy told her when he finished, even if you do see him. I doubt you'll be able to ask for a borrowed line, especially when you don't even know what it is. But I have to, Minley said. There must be a way. Well, I always think better after I've eaten, the boy said, and he stood up and opened one of the crates. Let's have dinner. While he fried the plain bamboo shoots in the pot over the fireplace, Millie looked around the bare room. Do you live by yourself, she asked. Uh-huh, the boy nodded. My parents died four years ago. Ever since then, it's been me and the buffalo. He spoke almost carelessly, without anger or self-pity. Suddenly, Minley thought about her own home. The wood floor always swept by Ma. The extra blanket Bob put over her when the wind blew cold, and she felt a strange tightness in her throat. The boy finished cooking and pushed the cooked bamboo, like thinly sliced pieces of yellow wood, onto a plate. He only had one plate, so he set it on the stool next to the the three peaches Minley had left, and both sat cross-legged on the ground. She took out her chopsticks. He only had one pair of those as well, and each picked and ate with the stool as a table and the single plate between them. You don't have any aunts or uncles, Minley asked, or other family or friends? Well, the boy said, tossed the peach to the buffalo, and then hesitated. I do have one friend, and Minley was surprised to see his face change unexpectedly. The sharpness of his expression softened like a flower blossoming, his small smile gentle. Who is it? Millie asked. The story of the Buffalo Boy's friend. Sometimes, during the hot summer days, there is not enough water for my buffalo, so I like to take him out of the city into the surrounding forest to drink in the stream there. One day I brought him to the forest and he kept pulling me and pushing me away from the stream. No matter what I did, he refused to go in my direction. So finally, I just let him lead the way. And he brought me to a part of the forest I had never seen before, a part I don't think anyone from the city has ever seen before. The trees seemed to reach the clouds. The green grass felt like a silk blanket, and there was a lake of clear water, so pure and clean it looked as if it were a piece of the sky. But the most beautiful things there were the seven girls swimming in it. When the girls saw me and the buffalo come through the trees, they screamed. They jumped out of the water, grabbed their robes, and ran away. They moved so quickly it seemed like they had all disappeared into the sky. All except for one, that is. One girl stayed in the water and stared at me with scared eyes. Her hair floated around her like a midnight halo, and her white face looked like a star in the sky. Hello, I said. You're, you're buffalo, she said, and her voice was like flute notes in the air. He's sitting on my clothes. Oh, I said, and I quickly pushed him over. On the ground, crushed and a little muddy, was a blue silk dress. As I lifted it, the softness made me ashamed of my rough hands. Here, I said, bringing the dress to the edge of the lake. She looked at me, hesitating. I won't look, I said, and I placed the dress on the ground and walked a bit away with my back turned. I heard her slip out of the water and heard the rustle of sil silk as she put on her clothes. Thank you, she said. You can turn around now. And when I turned around, a girl was smiling at me. She was my age, but she was prettier than any girl I had ever seen before. Even paintings of princesses were ugly compared to her. I didn't mean to scare you, I said. My buffalo was just thirsty. I guess so, she said, and she laughed like tinkling bells as we watched my big lumbering buffalo make his way to the water. I can't believe my sisters just left me like that. I'm the youngest, too. They're supposed to watch me. But I'm glad they didn't, because now I can talk to you. Tell me all about you. Does your buffalo go with you everywhere? And just like that, we became good friends. She wanted to know everything about me. It wasn't snobbish or anything. In fact, a lot of the time she sighed and said she wished she had my freedom. I have to go before they miss me, she sighed. I wish I could stay here. Where I live, I'm not allowed to do anything. There's always someone watching, telling me what to do, and it's kind of lonely. Well, visit me, I told her. We can have lots of fun together. I'll try, she promised. And she kept her promise. 
Like she said, it was hard for her to get away, but every night on the full moon when she visits her grandfather, she stops here. Sometimes she can only stay for a little while. Sometimes she can stay for hours. Whenever I see her, we laugh enough to last for the month. She's my best friend, and someday when we're old enough, I'm going to talk her into staying here forever. And she should be coming tonight, the buffalo boy said, and his smile was bright and broad. Oh, can I meet her, Minley said. It was funny how the buffalo boy's whole manner changed when he talked about her. His vaguely mocking attitude and tough expression washed away and he lit up like a lantern. She was glad the boy had someone in his life other than the buffalo. The boy looked troubled. She's really shy around other people, he said. I think she's afraid if anyone sees her, her family might find out that she stops here instead of going straight to her grandfather's. They're really strict with her. I won't bother her then, Minley said. Do you want me to leave? No, you can just stay with the buffalo, he said. She told me last time that this visit would have to be fast anyway. She was behind on her work, so they will expect her back quickly. Work, Minley asked. What does she do? She weaves and spins thread, the boy said. That's what she brings to her grandfather when she visits. Thread that she spins. Hey, I know. I'll ask her how you can see the king. She'll know. How will a weaving girl know about the king, Minley asked. Does she live in the inner city? No, she lives far away, the boy said vaguely, but she knows a lot of things. Millie shrugged. It didn't seem likely to her that a friend of the buffalo boy would know how she could see the king, but as she didn't have any ideas of home of her own, she would hope. Chapter 19 Millie started awake as she heard the scraping of the door against the dirt. The moonlight streamed in front of the window, lighting the bare hut. The boy had given her his pile of grass to sleep on and joined the buffalo, using some of its grass as a pillow. But as the buffalo snored loudly, Minley could see the bowl-shaped hollow in the hay was empty. I wonder where he went, Minley said. She found herself thinking of Ma and Ba and Dragon all waiting for her. Suddenly, the room seemed to ache with loneliness. The boy must be meeting his friend, Minley realized, and unable to control her curiosity, she crept to the window to peek. Yes, the friend was there. Minley was startled when she saw her. Even with the buffalo boy blocking out most of her view, Minley could see his friend was beautiful, even more beautiful than he had described her. She seemed to glow like a pearl in the moonlight, and her deep blue silk dress seemed to be the same color as the sky. The bag she held in her graceful hand seemed to be made out of the same silk, but the silver thread embroidered on it made it look as if it were made from a piece of the star-scattered sky. Everything about her seemed finer and more delicate than the average person. There was definitely something unusual about the buffalo boy's friend. Minley watched her laugh and then listened intently as the buffalo boy spoke. He gestured to the house and Minley ducked down just out of sight as the friend glanced toward her. He must be asking her about how I can see the king, Minley thought. As soon as she dared, Minley peeked again out the window. The buffalo boy's friend had her eyes closed toward the sky as if listening to the wind. Then she looked at the buffalo boy and spoke. He nodded and the girl smiled at what Minley imagined was the buffalo boy's enthusiastic thanks. Millie sat down on the wooden stool. She knows a lot of things, the buffalo boy had said about his friend. After seeing her, Minley was ready to believe it. But who is she? Minnie, Minley asked aloud. And just then, the buffalo boy came back inside. Oh, you're awake, he said when he saw Minley. As much as he tried, he couldn't hide the leftover smiles and laughter from his visit. His eyes sparkled as he sprawled himself out on the bed of grass. I talked to my friend. She said that the king might be at the market of green abundance tomorrow morning but you're going to have to find him yourself. Really, Minley said. How does she know? The boy shrugged. You didn't ask, Minley asked. Don't you think it's mysterious that you only see her once in a while? And you never visit her, she only visits you? And that she knows things like where the king might be tomorrow? Who is she, really? She's my friend, the boy said simply. That's who she is, and that's enough for me. As Minley looked at the buffalo boy, a glow with happiness against his poor surroundings, she saw it was enough for him, more than enough, as a smile that kept curling up on his face told her. Minley's questions fell from her as she realized there was nothing else to say. In fifth grade, that's where we're going to stop today. Um, so, I want you to think about who is the Buffalo Boy's friend? How could she possibly know when the king, where the king is going to be tomorrow morning? And also, do you, it's really awesome that the Buffalo Boy has been so kind to Minley, isn't it? 
Minley described his home as kind of like a shack that could be blown over by a really stiff wind and how he only has one pot to no bed to sleep in, but instead sleeps in the hay with his buffalo. With his bu buffalo. However, he doesn't seem unhappy, does he? No. And he's still willing to share even what little he has with Minley. That shows a lot of kindness, doesn't it? Mm-hmm, it definitely does. Nice work today, fifth grade.